you're in the market for a new hatchback, but you hate how overcomplicated cars have gotten nowadays, surrounded by loads of touchscreens, no physical buttons and loads of really intrusive safety tech, well, then the Mazda 3 could be a breath of fresh air. Hi guys, I'm Tish and welcome back to the John Banks Review Channel. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you around the latest generation of Mazda 3, a refreshingly simple but not lacking in any of the equipment new hatchback. So if that sounds good, then please keep watching. And if you like new car reviews and car content, then go ahead and hit the subscribe button. So first off, let's talk about the different options when it comes to picking a Mazda 3. There are five trim levels to choose from. The Prime line starts at just under £24,000 and comes with plenty of tech, including keyless start and high beam assist. The Homora model that I've been driving will cost around £1,500 more, but will get you sporty gloss black wheels and additional tech like wireless charging. The most luxurious Takumi model adorns the interior in leather and adds heated seats and a heated steering wheel, amongst other upgrades. Let's start by talking about what makes this car so unique, and that's what sits under the engine. You see, whilst many manufacturers are going down the lines of having smaller petrol engines and turbocharging them, Mazda are doing things a little bit different. The Mazda 3's engine offers several unique features that set it apart from its rivals. The engine incorporates Mazda's Skyactive technology, which prioritises fuel efficiency and performance. With a high compression ratio, the Mazda 3 engine achieves improved thermal efficiency, resulting in better fuel consumption and increased power output. But the most unique feature is the direct fuel injection. This technology enables precise fuel delivery and improved combustion, translating into enhanced fuel efficiency and reduced emissions. And don't forget, if you wanted to test out the Mazda 3 or any other Mazdas in the range, then you can do that at Colchester Mazda. I'll pop all the details down below and they'll be happy to help you out. The Mazda 3 can be had as either a hatchback like I have here or you can opt for a saloon but the latter doesn't seem to be as popular and I can see why because this is a really sleek and stylish looking hatchback. It makes the likes of the Volkswagen Golf look rather boring. It has a very sophisticated look about it. I also love the colours that Mazda 3s come in. There's a few different crystal colours, which include a crystal red, and I also love this colour. It's almost in between a white and a silver, and even when it's torrential rain like it is right now, it looks fantastic, especially when contrasted with the gloss black elements. The headlamps are sat in to the grille, and it gives that, that mean look. You've got an almost squinty look about this car. Continued with the gloss black design, you have gloss black alloy wheels on this model and you have gloss black wing mirrors to match. No gloss black roof, but I think that helps with the sleek design. You also have a chrome bar which runs along the door line and up over the rear doors. That simplified and elegant design is continued around the rear of the car. Mazda certainly haven't fallen in the trap of over-designing their cars like a lot of other manufacturers. I love this gloss black small spoiler that you have at the top and you've got those mirrored lights from the front of the vehicle so it's iconically a Mazda. You also get a gloss black rear bumper and two physical tailpipes. These are pretty much a rarity to see nowadays and in fact the other vehicle on the market that you can get with two rear tailpipes is the Hyundai i30 which I've recently reviewed so if you want to watch that I'll pop it up on the screen somewhere. Inside the boot it is slightly on the small side compared to some of its competitors like the Golf or even the Hyundai. You get 358 litres with the rear seats in place and that grows to 1026 litres with the rear seats folded flat. And there is a little bit of practicality lost due to there being quite a high load lip. So if you're often carrying push chairs and items that may be difficult to get out, then this could be the wrong option for you. But if you just need it to carry your weekly shop, then it should be more than sufficient. 
The entry-level eSkyActiv G engine produces 120 brake horsepower and features cylinder deactivation for improved fuel efficiency. It has a 0-62 time of 10.8 seconds, which is on par with many of its smaller turbo-engined rivals. The eSkyActiv X engine, on the other hand, delivers 183 brake horsepower and has a quicker sprint time of 8.1 seconds. Both engines are available with six-speed manual or automatic gearboxes, and they also incorporate Incorporate a 24 volt mild hybrid system for enhanced efficiency. Mazda has put significant effort into making the 3 one of the quietest cars in its class. Wind noise has been effectively minimised, with only a slight increase at higher speeds. The car delivers a smooth, accurate and refined driving experience. It exhibits a good-natured behaviour and installs confidence, whether navigating city traffic or tackling winding roads. The manual gear change, reminiscent of the MX-5, is a personal favourite and great if you're still in favour of an engaging manual drive. For those seeking the smoothest ride, opting for the 16-inch alloy wheels, which are standard on the prime line and centre line models, is recommended. The slightly unsettled ride around town is more noticeable with the 18-inch wheels, which are found on the sportier models. However, the larger wheels don't cause significant discomfort, and they do contribute to the car's attractive design. As I mentioned at the start of the video, if you're looking for a car which doesn't centre around large touchscreens and fiddly touch buttons, then this is a car that you're going to love. Because Mazda are very old school in their approach. It's not lacking in specification in here. In fact, it's quite the opposite. As standard, all trim levels get Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, which is wireless. They also get a rear view camera and parking sensors, cruise control as well. But there's a button for almost everything you may need. You'll find your physical heated seat buttons. You'll also find physical climate controls, physical buttons on your steering wheel for your adaptive cruise control. Down the side of the steering wheel, you'll find physical buttons for turning off some of your ADAS features and also your parking sensors. And then in the centre here, you'll find all of the controls for your screen. Because actually, the screen in the Mazda 3 is not a touchscreen. And instead, you use this centre controller to control all of the systems in the screen, which is so easy to use when you're driving. Sure, some of the systems when you're using your Apple CarPlay are a little long-winded, but it certainly is far more user-friendly if this is a system that you're used to. Inside the armrest, you'll find loads and loads of storage and also two USB-C charge points. So they're the new Type 2 chargers. So if you're still using USBs, then you may need to get an adapter. But that's pretty simple and can be done online for not a lot of money. At the front, you'll find two cup holders, some wireless charging in this higher spec model and a manual gearbox. This car is still available as both an automatic and a manual, which I know a lot of people will love. The one thing that perhaps they might not love is that you do have an electronic handbrake. But to me personally, I far prefer this than the old school handbrakes. It's super luxurious in here. You've got a really nice mix of materials. Similar to the exterior, You've got this chrome bar which runs along the centre and just wraps around the air vents. It looks very stylish. You also have a leather wrapped dashboard and to go with that sporty black appearance on the outside, you've got some red stitching. You also get a leather wrapped steering wheel which is very classic Mazda and again you get those touches of chrome which give it a slightly elegant feel. These seats are actually finished in cloth, so they don't feel as high in the materials. But if you wanted leather seats, then they are an option on the higher spec cars. These seats, however, are very comfortable. They're nice and bolstered, and I think you'll find them more than suitable on long journeys. And if at the end of this video, you're still feeling a little bit conflicted as to whether to buy a Mazda 3, then do me a favour. Go down below and read some of the comments because whenever I post about a Mazda on this channel, it gets so much great feedback from customers who already own them. You see, Mazda customers tend to be car enthusiasts. They like the way that the engines are set up and they love that simplicity when it comes to the driving experience. But let me know, 
What do you think of the Mazda 3? Are you considering some other models? If you are, which ones? Pop them in the comments down below and hopefully other people can help you out in telling you which one you should go for. If you have enjoyed this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more from me on the John Banks Review channel, then hit the subscribe button. Until next time, guys. See you later.